Hey everyone, earlier this month, Phase 1 released Capture One Pro 12. Today we're going to take a look at it, see what the new features are, demo some of those, and see whether it's worth upgrading at this time. Let's dive in. So in Capture One Pro 12, they have several new features listed. Luminosity masking, linear gradient, radial mask, interface updates, intelligent adjustment copying, keyboard shortcut search, plugins, and Fujifilm simulation. So let's take a quick look at this. Like some other recent updates, there are a bunch of new updates to the masking uh, technology. So we've got this linear gradient and radial gradient. So the linear gradient mask should be familiar to anyone who's used to using Lightroom. Very similar center line and min and max lines, those can get pulled in, twisted around. If you hold down the Alt or Option key, you can move one side of the gradient. So you could have a long, long fade that abruptly ends, things like that. The Luma masking is kind of interesting. You can bring this up, set a Luma range. Let's set this to display the mask so we can see it. And then we can see the Luma range here. So we go from the highlight or from the shadows up to the highlights. So if I didn't want to mask anything, if I only wanted to mask in the water here in this instance, we can bring the shadows up until it's only the water that's being masked. Tweak that a little bit, a little bit more fall off there, however you wanted to do that. This can be used for some interesting effects in something like water. So if we hit apply on this, and then we could do some crazy white balance. I don't know, make the make the water orange or yellow. This is still a live mask. So if I adjust the mask, we can see it. We can see it pull in. We'll see the same Luma masking affect everything. If we wanted to, we can rasterize that mask. Right click on the on the layer, rasterize the mask, feather it, do all of the things that we've been able to do in the past. Like the gradient mask, we also have the radial gradient mask. Or like the linear gradient mask, we also have a radial gradient mask. If we wanted to Oh, we wrote that in on the same same layer. So let's do this. You can see it'll only affect the water. And once it is in place, we should see that crazy yellow color that I threw in there. By the way, that's something I like to do when I'm setting up masks is make some kind of kind of crazy adjustment, either color or usually very high, very low exposure. I find it a little bit easier than using the just the red of the mask. Let's look at our other updates. We've got interface updates. They say they've updated the icons, which seem to be a little bit different. I believe they increased the size on the sliders just to make it a little easier to grab. Not a huge change in my book. You certainly won't be lost. It may make it a little bit easier. Intelligent adjustment copying. So if we go into the um, adjustments clipboard here, we can see there's this auto select. We can do auto select adjusted, adjusted except composition or none. And what this will do is when we're doing a, let's throw a crop on here just so we can see what this does help if I actually grab the crop tool. So if I have this set for auto select adjusted except gradients or except uh, composition and we copy this, we should see in this list here that the crop isn't selected. A lot of times a crop rotation, things like that, don't you don't want to carry over. So if we threw this on another image, which will look even more ridiculous, 
we should see the mask come in or highlight shadow layers. Why am I not seeing that layer come in? Hmm. <laughs> Well, that's what you get recording this live. Uh, display the mask. Interesting, interesting. So let's go back to, we wanted to copy this one. So copy it. Go over to our other image. Let's reset everything. Let's paste the adjustments. Should give us a wild circle in the sky. Or a spinning beach ball of death. That's what you get when you have an old laptop. So we've got that crazy circle in the sky, but it didn't bring that crop in. So if we reset this again, let's go back here. We'll do... So again, that was in the adjustments, adjustment clipboard, auto select, adjusted. So that should include anything, any adjustments that we've made, including this time the, the crop. Let's copy that out. We'll go back over here, throw some craziness at this image. We, th we see the mask come in and the crop come in. You can go in as in the past, and select or deselect any of the compositional or other elements to copy and paste. So that is the intelligent co adjustment copying. Keyboard shortcut search, this is kind of handy. If we go in and look at edit keyboard shortcuts, we can actually search for this. And I had to reinstall my Wacom drivers, so I want to, while we're in here, I want to set up my function keys so that my, my top function key here is new variant and the, bot, the next one is clone variant. So we can go in here, what is new variant, F2, we'll just do a, um, Keystroke, F2, new variant. So it just saves you some time having to look through this. And while we're in here, clone variant, F3, um, keystroke, F3, Clone variant. And then you can also update this, change these as, you, as you've been able to in the past, but having that search there just makes it a whole lot faster to be able to come in and map those function, change, change any other functions, do whatever you need to on that. Plugin architecture. This is potentially exciting and potentially really boring because plugins are one of those things. If people develop for it, great. If no one develops for it, it's kind of boring. Right now we've got a few exports. We can export to format, which I'm not familiar with. Helicon focus. So if you're doing focus stacks, you can process that and capture one export it directly into the Helicon Focus program and do your focus stacking, and then this JPEG mini output. These require, I'm not sure about format, Helicon Focus, it requires you actually own Helicon Focus. JPEG mini, there's a program, you have to have JPEG mini plus the plugins to be able to download that plugin. So, there's a start for some plugins. As of right now, not super exciting as far as I'm concerned, but that that is something that we'll we'll wait and see because there could be some really great stuff coming out. Now the big one. There's been an update to the price. 
not for new new buyers it's still two, 299 us dollars but the price for upgrades in the last two versions has gone from 120 to i think last year was 125 to now 150 dollars for an upgrade that's getting into painful and i'm asking myself whether i'm whether this list of new features is really worth that i bought it because I do these reviews, I do this kind of work for you guys. Wanted to have the latest and greatest, see what it was about. If it wasn't for that, I might be asking myself whether it's worth the price to upgrade or whether I want to skip this version and see what version 13 comes out with, or maybe upgrade a little bit later when there are other features added to version 12. How you feel about that, I guess it, it would come down to you taking a look at the features, you can get a demo. I could have just done this on a demo version. I went ahead and bought the new version right away. The other interesting thing with upgrades is that they've gone from only supporting upgrades from the last two versions. So previously you would have been able to upgrades version 10 and 11. To 12 now you can go back further they're not they don't have all of the pricing published i believe the further back you go the more the price increases to do that upgrade but that does mean that if you go three versions between an upgrade you're not completely out of luck so that's a look at some of the new features and pricing for capture one pro 12 Hope you found this interesting. If you did, take a moment to like the video, subscribe down here, and turn on notifications. Now, in the meantime, get out there and create something beautiful.